Welcome back. Uh, I just realized that I had promised a long time ago to talk a little bit about the Smart Home Panel app. And so I'm going to do that today um, and show you, because I've had it, I've had the Smart Home Panel running for a while now. This is a EcoFlow Smart Home Panel. Sometimes online people will call this the Smart Home Panel 1 or SHP1 now, because EcoFlow has come out with an entirely different Smart Home Panel that they call the S Smart Home Panel 2. So this is just officially called Smart Home Panel, but it's inofficially people refer to it as SHP1 so that they can keep them straight on. There's a bunch of groups on Facebook, um, which are really good for getting, there's Delta groups and EcoFlow groups, and they're really good for um, getting help if you have questions. So what I have, just a reminder of my setup, I have the Smart Home Panel. It's supporting 10 uh, circuits from our house that are 120 volt each. I have plugged into the Smart Home Panel, I have two EcoFlow Delta Pros. Again, these are the original Delta Pro. They now have a Delta Pro Ultra, which is an entirely different animal. But I have two Delta Pros, and each of these Delta Pros has one um, backup battery, extra battery connected to it. Um, I think that's probably the end of my, my uh, purchases for a little while anyway, because uh, right now with these, these four units, can power those 10 circuits in our house quite easily for 24 hours, I've decided or discovered. Um, longer if I was, if we were a little careful on, you know, turning out lights and not using stuff that we don't really need and that kind of thing. But, but 24 hours just with normal usage um, would be what I'd have. And then I can extend that with solar if it's, <laughs> if the sun is shining, which it's not right now. Um, can charge these up during the day with solar or I have a small Honda gas generator, um, 2200 unit, um, and I bought this nice cover uh, for it online. Um, I think I got it off of Amazon. I can't remember the brand name now, but it's, oh, it says IGAN on the side of it. Okay. Um, it's got a nice opening here for the exhaust uh, with a rain shield for that. It's got panels that you can open to get into it to connect to you know, adjust the choke and and turn and plug in an AC cord. So in a power outage, what I would do then probably is take one of these, take one of these two units offline, put the uh, generator outside, of course, because uh, I don't want to run it in the garage, especially if it's a closed garage. Um, but I'll set this out in the driveway. If it's raining, use the cover, and then run an extension cord, an AC extension cord in. Um, a good, good, good quality one, um, not a cheap one. Good quality cord underneath the door here, and plug it into one of those units, and then I can run the. I could run the uh, unit, oh, for a few hours, and and build up a charge, and then switch back and forth um, between the two Delta Pros and charge one at a time, because uh, I only have I only have one generator and. Uh, even even if we we're using power during the day, I can pretty much usually probably make, you know, make progress adding charge to the total, even if I'm still running stuff in the house. Okay, so I'm going to go next and look, show you the uh, the Smart Home Panel app. So here's a quick look at the, uh, this is the EcoFlow app, and it's on a Android phone. And I've got all of my my uh, devices here. If I click on, I'm going to talk mostly about the smart home panel, but just to quickly show, this is uh, one of the Delta Pros, and if I go here, it shows me the uh, the status of uh, both the main unit and the battery and the temperature they're at, and it shows me whether I've got anything coming in or coming out. There's nothing nothing happening at the moment. And you can go into the setup here and change some setups. And one of the important things, I think, for the smart home panel is under, whoops, not device sharing, is under energy management. So basically what I've done under energy management is I've got it set to, it'll go to a very low amount and it'll charge to 100%. And then pretty much um, let the smart home panel worry about, about the rest. At least that's the way I've been doing it. Okay, so let's go out of the smart home panel. So here's the smart home panel and on this main screen you can see 
uh, where the energy flow is going. So here's the energy coming in from the grid. Here's the energy going out to those 10 circuits in the house. Down here at the bottom are the two Delta Pros. If you click on one of the Delta Pros down here, you just get the, you don't get the, uh, you just get the overall unit. It, it, the smart home panel doesn't know what's going on between the battery and the Delta Pro. That's the Delta Pro's problem. Um, but there is a button here that's kind of important, and that's this recharge button. So if you ever, like if a, if a bad storm is coming and you want to make sure your batteries are topped off, if you flip this recharge button down here, it'll top them off to 100% for you from the grid. Um, okay. And if I click here in the middle, this also shows the usage for the day, but here's the 10 circuits. They have the names that I've given them. And um, each one shows how much is currently being used. If I click on any one, it's got some history. So there's, there's uh, the usage per hour for the current day. There's usage for the day of the current week. And there's usage for the daily total for the last 30 days. And it's a rolling 30 days. It doesn't keep any history uh, longer than that. The other thing on this screen is if you wanted to, I've got all these set to auto mode, and I'll show you why in a minute, but if you want to go in and set them to run manually, um, to, to switch between um, the grid and battery for that circuit, this is one of the ways you can do that. You flip this back to manual and um, then it gives you the choice. I can use grid power battery or I can turn it off. But I'm going to flip it back to auto because that's really I like it. Okay, let's go back to the main screen here. Oh, up here at the top, there's a log button up at the top here. And this gives you some, the things that have happened recently. Um, when that's populated, it's kind of helpful to see what's going on if you're ever try, trying to troubleshoot a problem. Okay, uh, now also on this page, there's uh, this little bar graph icon. Ooh, it's like you could actually see it. There's a little, eh, there's a little bar graph icon up there, and this is the same kind of information on the history, except this is for the entire ten circuits that the smart home panel supports. So this is totals, and also you can see here between there's a total usage. Here's usage that came from the battery, and here's usage that came from the grid. So I ran. Uh, if I go back to weekly here. You can see there was a time here where I ran battery power. Um, it was because there was a Puget Sound Energy had a flex event and I get paid for not using electricity during those hours. So I shifted my usage. Okay. And then the other two, there's two more things left here. One of them is the automations. And that's that little triangle thing that I just clicked on. There's an automatic one here, which will automatically, if there's a power go, if the grid power drops, this will automatically switch those 10 circuits to the battery pack up. And you can go in here and uh, I have them set so that it would, it would back up all 10 circuits. But you can go ahead and, and, uh, and change that if you want and turn some off or whatever. Then I have a couple of recharging. Or I guess I have one recharge. Um, let's look at that one first, a recharge automation. This one is set for like every day for the next year or something from midnight to 6 a.m. it's going to recharge the batteries to 80 percent so every night basically what i do you know midnight to 6 a.m. there's not going to be any solar power coming in anyway so i just top in the batteries up to 80 percent um and i have that turned on this little blue icon here means that it's turned on then i have some switching to battery backup icons here <clears throat> This one I've got set up, I think this is a good one to have. It's for like every day and every hour from midnight to midnight, 0 to 2400. And it's for all the circuits. And the reason that one's valuable is that on this screen then, if I want to just switch my whole house to battery, I can just click this one spot and in this one click here, turn that one automation on. And it will automatically um, then switch the whole house to battery. And if I want to turn it back to grid, I can just click that icon again. I do wish they had a way to, to, to label these because if you start building more than one or two automations, like I have three for battery backup and I can't remember which is which, you know, I have to like go into it and see what's, what it is. This is the one that I've got set up. I guess I could turn this off now. 
Uh, this one was set up just for a certain day and a certain time. And this was for the Poetry Puget Sounds Flex event. So I had it set up the night before. Uh, it says repeat once, so it's only, we're only going to do it once. It's not going to repeat. Um, you can set these up to repeat if you want. And basically what it's doing then is it's switching over during those hours, switching over to the battery. And that's um, that's pretty much it for the... Oh, wait, there's one more thing here. There's a little, uh, little hexagon up there at the top right. If I click on that... That's got the settings. You can name your, your energy, you can name your panel, uh, you enter your information about where you live, country, state, what the voltage is, what your frequency of your electricity is. Whether you got not you have split phase, I do not. You can go in here, and this is where you would name the circuits. And for each circuit, you can click on it. And you can give it a little icon, and you can tell it, you know, what's the, what's, what's how, how, for that circuit, whether it's 15, 20, or 30 amp circuit. Um, and then uh, you can set your charge limit. I've got mine set to 100% and discharged to 5% so they never completely go dead. Um, you can set your current. Uh, firmware updates. Oh, one of the last thing. Um, there's a thing here called EPS mode. And basically, I've got that turned off. Um, Smart Home Panel is not a UPS. It's an EPS. And so when it, if there's a power drop, it'll come up pretty fast it's like in about 20 milliseconds or something which for most equipment is good enough they won't notice it but for some sensitive stuff that would it would it would shut it off um, and then bring it back up probably so it's not a not a true UPS um, if you have something sensitive I have like a oh like I have a UPS on our our uh, internet router or Wi-Fi but you could you could put a UPS but go to the you know office depot and buy a little UPS and put it on whatever you wanted and then it would never it would never see that. But if you turn the EPS if you had the EPS turned on, what happens then is the Delta Pros are draining some power all day long because they're keeping that inverter ready to go at a you know at a 20 millisecond notice. So it takes energy to do that. So if you turn it off, then what happens is if the power goes off, there's actually going to be like about a two second delay. Which means that some of my equipment in a power outage um, would would turn off. You know, my com I don't know if my computer, but a TV might go off or something like that. Um, refrigerator is going to go off and then come back on again. You know that kind of stuff. So um, I, it's a trade-off. I have the EPS turned off. If I knew that if there was a you know a big windstorm and the power was real glitchy, I'd go ahead and turn it on. But on a normal day, I'll just leave it off because it saved myself a little energy and don't drain the battery so much. And that's about it. The, the app is pretty good. Um, I wish it had a little bit more automation features. I wish you could name the automations. But, um, but other than that, it works pretty well. And so I think that's it for this time. So thanks for staying with me all this long.